Hello, welcome to Gillivans Inside Out, and this is how I try and harmonize like Gillivans, video number two. In the last video, I did a quick roundup of how I might look at a passage, and it was just two bars of when I fall in love. But some of you have been asking what I might do over a longer passage, so I've decided to look at the same tune, but the first eight bars. To keep this video a reasonable length, I'm just gonna work on the bass line, but in future videos, I will harmonize and put in the inner voices. As you can see, here is the two bars we worked on in the last video. If you haven't seen that video, I recommend checking it out so you know what we're talking about. So I'm gonna quickly recap the rules that we looked at in the last video. Rule one was write the bass line first. Rule two, the bass and the melody shouldn't be the same pitch. Rule three, there should be three inner parts to create a five note chord. Rule four, don't repeat the same note in the same part in a row. Okay, let's make a start. So here's when I fall in love, the first eight bars. And above it, I have sort of the basic real book harmony. Here's what the melody sounds like. Okay, I'm going to start with the target chords. So what notes in this melody should be harmonized really strongly? That's what I look for when I think about target chords. Again, I think this A7 should be really rich. I'm going to put an A there. Now, usually I think about putting a G here as well, and I, I will for now, but it's likely I might change that. And that's okay, we're allowed to change things. Now in this sort of phrase, you've got to decide what note you'd like to have harmonized richly. I think about this G, actually. I know the A is higher, but for me, the G really needs to have the strong chord. So I'm going to put the B under it. This B flat as well. And we'll have a G at the end. So there's my target notes done. So to fill in the rest of the bass line, I really now want to consider the macro level of this melody. For instance, I don't really want to put a C here because it's going to be too repetitive. C, C, C. Here's what that sounds like if there's a C on each of them. Yeah, the C is okay, but it lands a little too firmly. I'd like this phrase to move. And that's what I mean by the macro structure. On a micro level, that C looks fine. It's falling to the B, then the B flat. But over the whole phrase, it's not that exciting. So in this part, I need to change the chord or put an inversion here. The first thing I think about is changing it for a three or a six, like a classic jazz substitution. So it could be an E minor seven or an A minor seven. If I make this an A, again, I think it's gonna be quite boring looking at my macro structure. A, 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 and then it goes B and then B flat. It's just not gonna make a good contour or a good melody. Here's what it sounds like with the A. Sounds terrible. So I'd probably try E next, and this could be a C with an E on the bottom, or an E minor seven. Here's what the E sounds like there.
Yeah, it's a lot better. So I like that. I'm going to leave the E there. All right, here I get to see one of my old school rules in action because B flat to a F, we've got a fifth. The next chords are A7. I do not want to put the A here. That gives me consecutive fifths. And it sounds weak. You might say, oh, that's an old school rule. But it sounds weak. Have a listen. Did you think? Did you think it sounded weak? So I would definitely avoid the A there. The first thing I think about is probably doing some sort of tritone substitution. That would work fine. Here I could put the A flat, but over a whole bar, it's not very exciting. Actually, it's likely that if Gil was harmonising this, he would change the rhythm of the bass here, like he does at the end of the A section in My Ship. But we want to keep this a little bit simple for the purpose of this video. It is good to delay the resolution somewhat, though. So I might try something like that, just putting in a 6 chord, sort of like doing a mini 251. Okay, I'm looking back here now. Let's try a D there. That should be basic enough. And here, I could copy what I've got with the first two bars. That could work, especially with a different rhythm. That's exciting enough. Let's try it. Here's what the first four bars sounds like. It's okay. I think it could be a bit more exciting. I think the E would work well there. It could be an inversion of the C, or it could be like an E7 to A7 movement. Here's what that sounds like. Good. Now the repetition of the D and G here, it's okay, could probably be improved. So what if, if I'm going to an E minor 7, let's say, what if I did a sharp 4, 7, 7? So we'd have F sharp something, B, 7, E minor 7. That could be good. I'll put in some of these new chords here that we're thinking about so we can see what we're up to. Here's what that sounds like. Yeah, that's sounding pretty good. Okay, it looks like the easiest option would be just to have a scale down to the B. And that works out well. None of the pitches are repeated, and we land nicely on the B, our target chord. In terms of our macro structure, we are repeating this B. We have to see what that sounds like. But otherwise, we're basically there. Here's what the whole thing sounds like. Yeah, I think that sounds good. And here's the bass line alone. Sounds like a nice melody to play to me. And of course, you don't need to stop here. We could try tritone substitution here, that F falling to the E. You could continue to play for this for many hours. And as you can see from this photo, that's what I did before this video.
I usually always do this on paper. I find it to be a lot faster and easier to edit on a small scale. So that's the bass line done for the first eight bars. Turn into the next video where I'll fill in the harmonies and give this a go at home and let me know if you come up with a better solution. There's definitely more than one way to do it. Check out the blog if you haven't done so already. There's a lot more detail there. See you!